I started going to my track records since the gospel. I said, I'm living right. Uh, so I've just been preaching. You know, uh, Lord moved today. You know, I feel like I preached the word good. You were blessed. Uh, you were blessed. Yes, sir. Um, you know, Lord, help me, help me identify this. And here, here's my wife. Uh, you know, she she saved, and I thank God for that. You know, uh, my wife says, I think it's me. Mm. And this was deep. I think it's me. Um, she said because I, I I teased you because the last time we went to this same restaurant, the problem was they couldn't get my order right. And it took them four tries the last time to get my food right. And she reminded me of that several times before we sat down. And so she said, maybe this was the Lord trying to teach me uh, that I shouldn't have been picking at you about your food. I said, now I'll buy that, but I still have to go through that. <laughs> now, now, now check this out. Because, and the truth of the matter is this. She might have been onto something. Yeah, for because real. when I'm connected to uh -oh. somebody. Uh-oh. Come on. Come on. And I'm one with somebody. Mm -hmm. My actions don't just affect me. Mm -hmm. They affect the one I'm connected to. Mm -hmm. So when I go through, and this is the exciting part. That, that was the sad part. The pastor had to wait three hours to eat because first they didn't know how to act. Amen. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> the exciting part is, just a caution, if first lady has gone through something, then I can be exempt from going through oh, that's it. that's good, sir. Because she went through it for us. Mm -hmm. That's good, sir. So God says, I give you the benefit, check this out, of understanding <laughs> when you go through the bruising and the process of what you got to endure. Yes. He says, you know, even at that, he gave me understanding, and now I got enough understanding to know that they too are on a timeout for a while. Uh, not just, you know, the chicken place, but this restaurant is absolutely <laughs> on a massive timeout. Massive. Uh, probably for the rest of 2016. Oh, He's just on timeout, you know. So if y'all want to go there, y'all will figure out where it is. Y'all ever say, Pastor, you want to go here? I'm saying, no, I can't do that. Uh, because they on massive timeout. Don't bring me no takeout from there. I don't need nothing. Amen. So um, we, we, we identify that we receive benefits from our bruising. Yeah. We go through a thing to get understanding of a thing. We go through an issue to receive wisdom from the issue. And God says, I'll give you that if you go through. And then, not only do I give you that, he says, I give you, uh, I give you quick understanding. Now, in order to get quick understanding, I remember Minister Black helped me, uh, hmm. this was some years ago. Yes. Uh, man, this is probably, um, mm, mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, 16 years ago, or I, I don't know, it was, it was a long time ago. Uh, he helped me put my resume together. And uh, specifically at that time, things have kind of evolved a little bit since the time that we put that together. But at that time, um, Minister Black says the key to a strong resume, which is still good now, it's just not as important as it was at that point. But the key to a strong resume is having a strong uh, description about you. Mm -hmm. It's got to be detailed enough, but not too wordy. <laughs> uh, so he says, let me just throw together some stuff for you that we can put here to kind of capsulize who you are in about two lines. Mm -hmm. And one of the words that he used was a uh, detailed oriented quick study. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, one that is capable of picking up a thing quickly. Now, God says it's through bruising. Sister Lipscomb, that you understand or that you gain the anointing to become a quick study. Mm -hmm. uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me meddle for a minute. Uh, even on our jobs, uh, there must be a measure of, of, of issue, uh, frustration, uh, you know, haters in order for me to be bruised that I can be illuminated the word. as a quick study. That's good. Mm -hmm. mm. So now, because I endure, this is uh, Sister Nilsky and I, a good word, uh, your incompetence for a season. Mm. It was the endurance of your incompetence that allowed God to accelerate my understanding. Mm. So now, because you are a bother to me and you are a bruiser of me, God says, I'm going to make me become a quick study that the one that was bruising me now has to work for me. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear. Mm -hmm. But it was a benefit 
of what I endure. Mm -hmm. I've got to endure it in order to receive the benefit of it. Okay. Um, let's, let's, let's go here. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Um, I said this earlier, but this is the point I want to make. It was what Jesus experienced externally that equips us to handle the bruising internally. It was what Jesus experienced externally that equipped us to handle the bruising internally. Let me give you these last few verses of scripture here. We're going to 1 Peter. And I gave y'all 1 Peter 4 and 1 a minute ago. But I want to give you these because this is, this is just good. This is just good stuff to have in your spiritual quiver. Uh, it's good understanding. It's, it's just good things to know out of the scripture. 1 Peter. 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter. Um, mm. Well, I wasn't going to give you four, and I still might. But let me give you three first, because this is, this is good for First Peter chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 13. <clears throat> we'll read through a few verses of First Peter chapter 3, uh, verse 13, through uh, probably through 18. But this is good for us to hear tonight, because all this is talking about the purpose behind being bruised. Now, verse 13, First Peter 3 says this, And who is he that will harm you? or bruise you, or hurt you, if ye be followers of that which is good. But, and if, Minister Black, ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. Mm. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Mm -hmm. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, mm -hmm. they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil. For Christ also have once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So we identify here that when I'm in the process, Sister Akasha, Sister Akasha, of being bruised, God says, uh, it is better for you to go through it, if that's my will, as long as you go through it doing good. Now, a lot of times, and, and I say this, I don't know how many times I've said it here at, at this church, but this was one of the things that I always just kind of had for a while I, I don't want people, I don't like it, I can't say one. I, I just don't like it when people lie on their persecution. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? I, I, I'll tell you. Um, scripture says it's better for you to go through it for doing good. Which means if you bought it on you, yeah. don't say you're suffering for God's cause. Yeah. yeah. You're lying on your persecution. Yeah, you You're it. suffering as a liar yeah. because you lied. Don't say because I'm seeing this is the, this is the problem right here, Sister Lipscomb, because it saved people that lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when the Christian does the sin and is punished for it, the Christian wants to say, I'm enduring this for the cause of Christ. No, you're enduring this because you're a liar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You completely brought this on you. Wow. So God says, don't try to confuse it with this is in general suffering because I'm saved. No, this is suffering <laughs> because you decided you didn't want to tell the truth today. Mm -hmm. So God don't want us to lie on why we're going through. He says, because this is how you can tell. 16, I'm going to give you verse 16 again. That same chapter, chapter 3. It says, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. So when, when, when folk are lying on you and they don't never get convicted or ashamed, maybe they're not really lying on you. If they never get any type of, um, you know, um, any check, you know, they're not saved. If they don't ever get, you know, God don't ever call them to the carpet, for what they saying and doing to you, mm -hmm. maybe, just maybe, they're not lying. Mm. Mm. Maybe, just maybe, you're really doing it. Ah, yeah. 
But, but pastor, I ain't doing it to them. Yeah, but you're still doing it. And because you're doing it, God says, I'm just allowing the light to shine from this area about what you're doing behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. So until you stop doing it behind closed doors, there's not going to be any conviction to come or any, any, uh, you know, any, any, any challenge to come to the one that's telling it because all they're doing is speaking to what they think they know, but what God really does know. Okay. Um, so he says, make sure that we're suffering the right way. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you how you suffer the right way. Let's look over to First Peter chapter four. And now I'm wrapping up. Start. I'm gonna give you verse number twelve. I'm gonna run twelve through the end of the chapter, and that's how we're gonna end tonight. Um, still talking about benefit behind us being grooved by what Christ did externally that allows us to handle it internally. Scripture says this. First Peter chapter four, starting verse number twelve, it says, "Beloved." Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Uh huh. Uh, but rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. Here's the meat of it. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. God help us all. Uh, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come, we said this last week, the judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first began in us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, 19, let, us them, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. So we identify here that God gives us the grace to know that uh, the bruising we endure should not be bruising because we're a thief. Mm -hmm. The bruising that we endure should not be bruising because we are a liar. The bruising that we endure should not be bruising because we are busybody in other men's matters. God says, when you're suffering and being bruised for my sake, mm -hmm. I'm going to put your suffering on display so that people will know it was me that carried you through. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. If, okay, if when I'm put on display in the thing, but God never gets glory out of what was displayed, mm -hmm. I never really suffer for him. I'll say it again. If I'm put on display mm -hmm. and I'm going through something, but God never gets glory out of what he allowed to be seen, I didn't really suffer for him. Mm -hmm. Because every suffering I endure for Christ will always bring glory to him through my life. So if I go through, you know, if I go through a hard time and I got to experience bankruptcy and I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm out there in the news clippings, you know, uh, North Carolina pastor has lost his mind and, you know, all this. And all that comes out, but none of it brings glory to God. Yes, sir. Then that's just because I was janky. Right. That was me putting it on me. Mm -hmm. But when God allows me to go through a thing and to endure a thing, when he brings me out, he's going to bring me out for his glory, which means he's going to put me on display. Check this out. Not just when I went through it, but he's going to display me when I come out of it. Mm. That's good. He's not just going to show me mm -hmm. uh, losing weight and being stressed and all this other stuff without showing me uh, pointing to uh, the thing that he just gave us. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and he, won't, he won't let me go through the suffering without allowing my suffering to bring glory if it's really something that he calls or allows to come about in my life. All right, um, I, I, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I think I'm, I'm gonna end right there. Uh, I just want us to remember tonight yes, that there is purpose in being bruised. We just gotta make sure that we're being bruised in the right place. Yes. If our head is being bruised, that means we're on the side of the enemy. Oh, God, that, that should have stopped two minutes ago. If our <laughs> head is being bruised, that means we're on the side of the enemy. Because the scripture says, uh, Genesis 3.15, that the heel of Christ 
is going to crush or bruise the head of the enemy. So if it is the upper part of me that's being challenged, maybe I need to identify whose side I'm on. Mm. Mm. That's good. Because if it's not my heel, God help me here, mm. that's being bruised, but in fact it's my head that's being bruised, maybe I'm on the wrong team. Um, what are what are what are what are, what are, what is my heel? My heel is my bottom. It's my base. It's my foundation. Yes. Okay. So if the heel is my bottom, my base, my foundation. That means that if I'm suffering, I should be suffering in things that are foundationally already strong. God help me to get out of here. Okay. Um, it's got to be the suffering should be in my foundation because it is my foundation that is destroying the authority of the enemy. Okay, so what does that mean? If, if the enemy comes against the church, which he is doing, and I'm talking about the church universal, when the enemy or the world or whatever system it is comes against the church, that is a telltale sign that the church must be on the right side of the war because what they're attempting to attack is the base of the church, the foundation. What's the foundation of the church? Well, marriage between a husband and a wife. That is a foundational base. Well, when that is being challenged, if you're on the side that says marriage is a covenant between a man and a woman, you're being attacked to say that marriage should be for whoever loves whoever. So the world and authority, governments decide they want to come against the base of the church. But well, God says, I've given the church through Christ enough strength in its base that when the attack comes, the base will crush the authority of those that are coming against it. Where is my attack coming from? Where is my bruising? If it's not something that's foundational, that's being challenged, or something foundational that's being pushed, then maybe, just possibly, I'm on the wrong side of the wall. Wow. All right, I, I'm done. Any questions, I, I'll, I'll pose, I'll give time for any questions. Any questions?